I was probably in a very uh, unique place during Columbine. Lisa Stroman was studying with the FBI's profiling unit, beginning to learn about what makes a school shooter tick. We were able to understand the motivations and why these people or why these kids do what they do. Today, she's a clinical psychologist working with schools on the best ways to prepare kids for the worst. Part of that is drills. They shouldn't get to the point where they're scaring kids, where they have anxiety, depression. Many Valley school districts use lockdown drills, not active shooter drills. Stroman says parents should make sure the drills are appropriate for their kids. If something happens on our campus and it's scary, we're going to lock down and here's what the lockdown means. You're protected, you're in a classroom, and you have your teacher. In the middle school and high school level, I think it's a bit different where we're talking about there is a potential that this could happen. The key now, Stroman says, is teaching kids how to identify a threat on their screen. In every single one of these cases that, that I've looked into, these kids talk about it or they make note about it on social. So somebody knows. Stroman says schools spend thousands of dollars investigating online threats. And if parents don't educate their kids, it may cost them one day. And I think that pretty soon down the line, parents are going to be liable for those expenses because it's very clear to me that the schools can't afford these little one-off hits um, much longer. Well, so far, two school districts got back to me to say they do the active shooter drills, but not when kids are at school. In Phoenix Union High School District and Paradise Valley Unified School District, the drills are for educating staffers. Live in the newsroom, Carissa Plan up for Arizona's Family.